MBN Network Media News for all races connecting to the world. Connecting to the world. Yeah, so this is how sometimes you start your day on a very easy going note. It is 24 degrees centigrade here in Abuja, and of course, business is going on. Uh, well, of course, not probably not the word hustle and bustle they do different here just in case you're wondering i i know somebody's about to rub it in oh, but in any ways um here we go again let me say <laughs> uh-huh here we go again it's good for your mindset absolutely i love this city that's jadi lake by the way with everything that comes with this can do a state somewhere yeah, around offices there. around it as well just so offices you know offices are around here as well the massive business section around uh, up and around that lake there well that is the beautiful scenery our beautiful peaceful city of abuja and i'm uh, looking forward to a wonderful calm morning uh, no doubt this is a beautiful sight to wake up to any day and any time Chamberlain, I, I uh -huh. still remember you know the day we had to you took a section of this particular um location for a quiz and there was a yeah. struggle even the person sitting next to you i'm not mentioning anyone's name no, the person no, right there in the studio you. with you now this is your veiling <laughs> this is the full of veiling of the area so i didn't full mention anyone's top. name just just so you know i didn't mention anyone's name hey so but uh, right now, I know that the weather you have there in Abuja mm -hmm. is something in the region of 27 degrees, feeling like 30, with a 77% humidity. It's not too far from what we have in Lagos. At 28 degrees, feeling like 33% um, of 38, 33 degrees, but our own humidity is a little, uh, a little more than yours at 87%. So, beautiful one. Welcome, everyone. Yeah, yeah so... It's uh, quite interesting. So much later in the day, you get to get that 7, 27, you know, but right now, uh, that 24 feels like 27. And so, yeah. well, I, I know by now, you know, when they say, come to where the flavor is. <laughs> hey, Aya. <laughs> Are you coming to where the flavor is? <laughs> As I was saying, if you wish it were hot. <laughs> you know, one thing about your city in Abuja or anywhere else, in Nigeria, they say, welcome to Abuja, welcome to Nassau, but when you get to Lagos, they tell you, 
this, this Lagos. Whether you want to welcome yourself or not, that's another thing altogether. When you get to Lagos, it shows you. When yeah. A person like Abuja, you know, you're welcome. You know, it's really nice. Uh, but Lagos assaults you with its presence. Oh, no, Lagos tells you. No, no, no don't. Lagos tells you no, darling. This is Lagos. And the boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, the thing about that uh, about this country is that there are lovely places in this country that I and I don't even haven't seen for a while. And if I haven't even ever seen, and so you see them and you feel wow. So you, so there are sometimes you need to look at all of those areas. Of course, while you go about your regular business as you try to build the country, uh, the one that you know generation to be happy to live in but yes indeed so um this morning there seems to be some unfortunate scenario in lagos yes sir chamberlain um i was in traffic about two hours uh before well wow. a little over, over a little over an hour before getting to the office this morning and you know that's very much unlike me so a trip that would take me something about say 15 minutes took me more than an hour and I'm wondering how far back the traffic tails now. Unfortunately, what happened, there was a horrible accident, this particular one. This was taken off was much earlier in the day, and the traffic I ran into just before the Jabasta, but I wonder where, how far back it tails now. You can see it's right before, right in front of World Oil uh, Fuel Station. I'm wondering how far back it is now. When I when I got back and look at this, it's, it's like there's a small vehicle right under this big trailer truck, um, right there. Uh, and I, I saw it must have involved like three different vehicles because I also see one of the luxury travel buses. Uh, when I was uh, when I got through uh, from the traffic to come to the office this morning. I know that there are officials of government there, LASMA, and not just LASMA, officials are there. Of course, this is the luxury bus that was that, that is that, uh, also involved with that traffic. A horrible, horrible traffic. I don't know how far back the trailer, the, the traffic tails now, but I'm almost certain it will be somewhere around the Secretariat bus stop right now. So in case you know anyone who is saying they're in traffic, they don't know where they are. This is the origin of it. It's still there right now. And I know that officials of government are there to do whatever they can. What is unfortunate, as usual, uh, in Lagos, Chamberlain, is those on the other side who are not directly affected by the traffic are slowing down to see what's going on. And that is also causing a backlog of traffic on the other side of the expressway. That's also to let you know exactly, <coughs> excuse me, exactly what is happening in Lagos at this time, but officials of uh, the law of government are there to ensure they do the needful. Uh, last month officials are there, FRST officials are also there. How they're going to get a truck to this place to remove the, uh, the impediment in the road, I think that's what we are waiting to see now. But just so, so you know that this is the cause of that horrible um, backlog of traffic this morning. Huh. Well, well, well. Um, Forgot to add, this is Lagos, so be careful. I hope well. it's not ghastly. I hope no one, no one lost their lives. It looks really, looks really terrible. This accident, and we know that no one is safe. And if you're, if you're on that axis, please take it easy, please. Well, what, what, what we can only say, say you how we use the roads. Absolutely, we can only hope. I mean, of course, we will definitely bring you more updates on that as uh, events unfold. But for now, yeah. that's just the situation that we have on our hands. All right, let's go ahead and take you through some of what we'll play out today. Uh, the ministerial briefing continues, to, uh, it will happen today. Uh, it's about the, a year in office of this administration. So you've got the ministers of FCT, Youth Development, Housing and Urban Development, Transportation, Aviation and Aerospace Development, scheduled to brief this morning. So uh, they're supposed to be there and ensure that um, Nigerians get to hear what have they done in the law ever since this government came through. So all eyes will be on them today. Also happening today, the launch of the National Portal, and I think it's going to be happening at the exact same venue, uh, launching of the National Portal, gov.ng. 
uh, and of course uh, this national portal will provide this single gateway to government services and it will be um, enabling citizens home and abroad to easily access and register marriage certificates, national ID, your name, a registration of birth, apply renewal of driver's licenses, uh, apply or renew your passport. So that uh, that portal is going to be launched today. It's OneGov, right? OneGov.ng. OneGov.ng. So it's going to be launched today. We'll be keeping you informed on um, what uh, all of that is about in the course of the day. And it's, it's going to be a very interesting one because I want to be able to do this at home. I don't want to be going to the office, standing on the queue, you know. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. So we'll be keeping our eyes on that one. Ayo's got business for us. Yeah? No, before, before the business bit, yeah. um, so I think today's also the. Oh, by the way, about this launch. So when that happens, uh, the narrative we heard for those of Nigerians who are usually outside the country who want to access some of these things is they get all kinds of impediments that the missions lay or place there. So they need to find a way to ensure that we don't constitute as impediments to ourselves if this is launched. So it's supposed to be one gov, right? So let's not make it two or three with those impediments. Just one stop shop. But some people always want to make sure that no, there must always be another layer. It shouldn't be this easy. Or well, should it be this easy? It shouldn't always be that way. And it's also National Museum Day today as well. Yeah. And that one, when last did anybody go to any museum though? Oh, uh, well. We should go. So, There's so many. Yeah. So, um, I hope. Yeah, well, you, you will go to a museum if there is one next door, but hey, right now we're going you know to what? have business. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, like, let's just hold it. Uh, we'll, we'll, go to, <laughs> we'll go to business now. Business this morning will be assessing CBN directive on BDC's uh, concerning license reapplication. Find out the details of that this morning. Uh, during business morning on Sunrise Daily. Before you go on and on, Kayla, let's go to the papers. <laughs> okay, let's take you through some of the dailies we have for you this morning. We're going to start with Nigeria Tribune. The lead story, one year in office. Economic pains, hardships, unintended, ascribed to federal government. Ministers apologize to Nigerians, say Tinubu laying foundation for nation's growth. That's a big thing you have right there on the front page because, of course, it is uh, an ongoing conversation across the country, which, of course, will come to also as we progress here this morning. Nigerian News Direct equally focuses on that theme, one year anniversary. Tinubu ministers to present scorecard. President has laid foundation for sustainable progress, prosperity in one year. Ascribed to SGF there today. So, uh, what if you have a look at Blueprint? Similar narrative, Tinubu's renewed hope agenda working. Ascribed to Wakume, but above that, the list of Yakubu CX. Stop coronating ruling parties, candidates in LG polls. Look at that word. Coronating seems to be the operational word here, and that sticks out for a lot of people. All right, so moving on to Daily Trust. They lead with CNG, no conversion centers in 27 states. High cost, forex crisis, slow adoption. Owners of 15.5 billion vehicles in Dalema. FG partners Algon to reach 774 local government areas. Oh boy. Well, who knows? Probably those who have had this conversion done may send us a word or two to know what they're grappling with at the moment. But Vanguard is next here and they focus on minimum wage talks. Labor cuts demand to 497,000. FG OPS offer. 57,000. So, there you go. Well, look at the rider. Yesterday's talks end in stalemate. Ozodema attends briefly as other governors shun minimum wage talks. So, 
believe me that uh, the good thing means since others are not there, then I might as well vote. The Guardian is up next here. 18 year old construction work, that's a different theme altogether. From 9 billion naira in 2006, abandoned National Library to cost over 200 billion naira. Whoa. Cost of abandoned projects. Who knows? This Nigeria leads with insecurity. Military denies aiding, abetting, profiting from banditry, terrorism. Tackles Katsina governor, or rather, asks him to substantiate claims. So, this is a significant part of both. Huge one in terms of its implications here. So, we'll be looking to see uh, how it turns out eventually. But the independent is also focusing on the national minimum wage matter. Labor shifts ground, accepts 497,000 naira, FG6 to 54,000 naira. So that's fairly uh, deadlocked there. No zone of possible agreement as of yet. So that's uh, what you see there. The Nigerian Observer, no more money rituals, smoking in Nollywood movies, says FG. You heard? So that's big lead there. So guys, I'm wondering what you make of this one. Okay, so <laughs> I know we've got to run, but uh, look at that news, new telegram, guys. LG polls, mayor coronation of ruling party's candidate, subscribe to INEC. So, isn't this what we've been talking about all the while? So, who knows? In fact, look at this. It says that sometimes they just constitute the CEC on the eve of election, then despite them afterwards. That's impunity. You said the least that goes on in some states. But how is it that nothing can be done about it, or we're not doing something about it? Something can be done, but other parts seem to have chosen to look the other way. But you know what? It's up to you and I to decide if we want this to continue or not. Because this is, it belongs, this country belongs to us. So we should have our say, not just our say, our way for the most part. Because the right things have got to be done. Chiriti. What stands out for me uh, from the Vanguard this morning. Um, so this uh, this dance between Labour and federal government. Uh, well, Labour has shifted. <laughs> it's going to continue like this uh, to 497,000 naira as the minimum wage, and federal government is offering 57,000 naira. Um, this dance will continue until some kind of solution is reached. But you know, it's pertinent that while we understand these negotiations are going on, that the Nigerian is suffering. It's a very important point to make and a very important scenario for us to be very conscious of. These demands, for the Nigerians out there who are thinking, look, 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 we cannot continue, look, these demands, listen, it's important that the worker is able to survive. We can't kill the worker. If things are hard, if inflation is up, if everything is costing three times more, then we should be able to handle that. These are some of the questions out there. That's why many people feel, you know, a lot had to be done before these policies of government were made. But these policies have, have been made already. Now we have to be able to make sure that the Nigerian survives. And that is why these negotiations are going on. And they will continue until some logical conclusion is reached. Well, my pick this morning, and that's a, quite an important thing that you raised there, Kayla. Well, my, pick, my take this morning concerns the image of Nigeria anywhere in the world. So I am very excited about what I find on the front page of the Nigerian Observer this morning when they say, no more money rituals or smoking in Nollywood movies, says the federal government. Well, interestingly, it was the statement was made at a national stakeholders engagement on smoke-free Nollywood. And it was in Enugu. What I find interesting about this one is it concerns the image of Nigeria. It is the narrative we want people to see that they will see. It is the narrative we want anyone to see in the world about Nigeria that they will see. But while the statement has been made by the federal government, the question we also want to ask is, how is the federal government encouraging the movie makers to get on with this that they have made a pronouncement about? Who is even monitoring? the quality or grading of Nigerian films. We know that there is a national film and video census board, but do they censor it? 
or they just looking out to tax? It's just a question. So whatever the answers are, please provide. But it is exciting that this is coming from the very same uh, video, film and video census board, uh, the, the CEO of the organization. So how is government going to support Nollywood? That should also be put out there. How should um, everyone who is a movie maker get any access to government or any government intervention? I know that the federal government has this team, had this team led by Alibaba at some point concerning the creative industry in Nigeria, and I'm glad that the federal government recognizes them. But what are the impetus they get? What are the advantages that they get? What are the, uh, the incentives that they get for laundering the image of Nigeria the way it ought to be? Please add that also to the buffet. In the meantime, we'll take a short break now. When we return, it's time to have solid conversations. Just join us. Media news for all races connecting you to the world. <laughs> 